Let's see who we have here today. So Carla, she heard I'm from LA for my health. Absolutely. I think health, big theme this week for me as well. Mona in San Pedro. Nice. Thank you for being here. Yes. <laughs> She's that <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, I was like, Jackie's. I'm wondering how do I pronounce that? I know I tend to put your name. Jacques. Hmm? Jacques. Jacques. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Jackson, is that? Mississippi. Mississippi. Whoa. Wow. Yes. Oh, I'm from the other side of this country. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm from Mexico, so that's why sometimes I don't get states very well. Like, <laughs> so yay. Oh my God, that's awesome. And breath, just yes. Breathing, great thing to be grateful for. Mona, she, her, and then Susu, Shmike, um, they, them. I'm enjoying from Sacramento. I'm grateful for sleep. Yes, me too. <laughs> it was like this week, my son was sick. So sleep has definitely been part of, of my gratefulness bucket to be like, I'm able to sleep. That's great. Um, Marie, Eastern Canada. Wow, we even have people from other countries. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh -huh. This beautiful uh -huh. day. Yes. And so I have around Tori Ann, she, her, and I'm joining from Los Angeles mm -hmm. for another chance. Other chances. I think that is something that we sometimes forget we get, but that it is awesome when we get them and being grateful for them. Yes. <sighs> Maria Petrovsky, MA is Minnesota. What is MA? Just tell me. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> I was like, I need help with my geography. I feel like at this point, I've been living here for 10 years. Like I should get these things already. <laughs> Uh, but for some reason I never do and I'm always like confused so I was actually very challenged in geography even as a child <laughs> so I have to blame that for sure um northern Nevada grateful for love and spirit yes absolutely always held Brian from Kudahi, California grateful for being able to exercise today thank you yes I'm grateful for you to take that time to exercise San Diego hi Ashley Grateful for this beautiful day. Absolutely. This beautiful fall day. Yes, I do love fall. I think it's better. Um, all right. Roof over my head. Something to be very grateful for. So um, Stacy, a lamb trauma informed facilitary movement art and writing. Oh, love it. Such a beautiful thing to do. I also love like movement and art. I think they just go well together and also writing processing. Great. They're from Virginia for the beautiful nature and that surrounds the mountains. Corona, grateful for this offering. Thank you for, for this class today. Thank you again for that. Switching animals are walking on my background. Hey, it's a part of the Zoom live, right? Am I right? So how about we just begin? I don't want to take, you know, most of our time. I know we have a well, you know, some some stuff to cover for sure. <laughs> so for this offering or for this yes absolutely i'm so glad you took the time to be here that's amazing i'm very grateful for all Adia, of you we can get started if you would like absolutely let's okay. do this great well hi everyone and welcome to our october hope session art journaling for joy i am heidi parker my pronouns are she her and i am the programs manager here at ucla arts and healing and i'm your zoom host today so this program is presented as part of our Free Hope series, which we created to support the resilience of our global community through social emotional arts. Each workshop offers a supportive space for connection, healing, and empowerment as we navigate the changes in our world. We are grateful you're all here to create and learn together today. Today's program is in a meeting format, so please keep yourself muted until prompted otherwise, and we suggest you stay on gallery view. If we spotlight an attendee, you can always switch back but we are recording today's session to be shared on our YouTube channel and you are welcome to leave your cameras on as you feel comfortable as we'd love for you to actively participate. You are also invited to use reactions features to support each other when sharing. Our session today will be an hour and given this short format, we'll take questions as we have time for at the end. So feel free to add them in the chat as they arise. So before we begin, we would like to start by acknowledging the Tongva Nation, on whose land the city of Los Angeles, where we are based, rests today. We hold respect and gratitude for the Tongva people who still consider themselves the caretakers of this land. 
And by their example, we are reminded of our responsibility to our planet and one another. So let's take a moment in our own way to honor the indigenous communities of past and present on whose land you are joining from today. So I'd like to welcome today's presenter, Nadia Fernanda Paredes. She is a bilingual and bicultural licensed marital and family therapist. She also holds a degree in psychology, a certification as an intuition painting facilitator, and as a trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy provider. She brings over a decade of experience working in the mental health field, where she's provided bicultural services to pregnant adolescents, Latino immigrants, seniors, and as a consultant for emergency preparedness, so welcome, Nadia. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Heidi, for giving me this space today. Very grateful and very grateful for everyone that's here. So let ourselves begin. So I will let you know a little bit of what we're covering so that you know a little bit of what to expect during this hour that we're going to be working. Um, so we'll be talking about the arts for general health. This is kind of, again, this is an intro to, um, you know, our journaling. So I cover some of the generals, um, and, and then go a little bit more into specifics, not too specific, but kind of like specific enough for you to start a practice. Uh, then there's also art is for everybody. I think that is one of my big things. I'm a big arts advocate. And I think that really everybody should and can do art. Um, then we're going to create some art together, our first exercise. And then we jump into actually, what is our journaling? How do we do it? Um, how can we start like our own journaling practice, the steps that we take, some creative rules for today, but not only for today, but I will tell you for probably the rest of your life, if you ask me. And then we go into our second exercise and then we go into some self-exploration. Oh, I just noticed I did change our exercise, our second exercise for today. I didn't update that slide, so apologize for that. Um, but anyhow, let's begin. So, so the arts for general health. Um, you know, for those of us uh, who work in the arts like field, in the expressive arts field and the one for healing, we already know that the arts are so important, right? That, that they're great for healing, that they're great for building people up, for building society, sub communities. It's just, it's great. But if we talk to the general public, sometimes they don't know this, right? So, you know, when we talk about art, you know, when we engage in art with a healing intention, and that's a difference, right? When we do art, you know, for, for the aesthetic, for, for the beauty of, of creating, that's, that can be one thing. However, when we really do it with an intention to, you know, to heal ourselves or to express what's going on inside of us, uh, then it can become a preventive mental health practice. Right. And this is not only me, this is also according to our therapist, Wilkinson Chilton, in their awesome book, Positive Art Therapy. If you don't know it, I highly recommend it. It's really good. Um, and why is that? Right. So, why, what happened during the research? They saw that it really, that the arts and visual arts in particular, that's what their, you know, books about, it enhances emotional management and authentic self expression. Right. So, that is the thing about art that I think we should all really know that it is really about just being very much, um, you know, our authentic selves. Um, when we engage in the arts, you know, we can help develop skills, right? So the good thing about art is that I always call it kind of like the mental gym, right? Like you go to a gym to get some physical exercise out there while you know the arts can be a great, uh, um, you know, how would I say this? Yeah, we're going to come back again, a way to work out your mind, particularly your creativity. And creativity, you know, what is it useful for? Well, of course, as you know, it, creativity is not only for creating arts, it's actually a problem solving skill that we have. It helps us with invention. It helps, it helps us kind of come up with new ideas, right? So we innovate so that we can solve problems more effectively. And this is why I think it's so important that we actually exercise our creative muscle, because it also as the same time it's helping us on the cognitive side, it's also helping us on the kind of like self-awareness side. It can really help us connect with our inner self, with our inner strengths. It, it can help us see what's going on inside of us and becomes kind of like a picture of ourselves outside of ourselves. Um, also very important, the World Health Organization published a report in 2019 where they summarized 900 studies that actually showed a strong correlation between the arts and the general health and well being, right? This study was actually for all the arts. So if you're interested in looking into it, very beautiful. It was actually the European um, kind of like 
section of the World Health Organization that, that did this. But I think it's just really great to read like how the different arts are really connected to health, right? And to all these benefits that we can see. As I usually tell my clients, I was like, we go into the arts and there is a difference, right? When we see fine arts, and then there's the arts that are fine for me, right? When we see the fine arts, that's the art that we see in a museum, right? That's the art that hangs in galleries, that is probably being sold, that, you know, that is probably just, it has more of an aesthetic intention most of the time, although it can also be used, you know, for social movements and art activism. Um, but uh, there's also that one that is art that I do for myself, right? Art that I do at home that nobody will need to see. No, the world doesn't need to know about my creations. And therefore, I can really use it to express myself fully. How is that? Well, you know, it's kind of like I, I, I give this comparison of like, we go to the gym, right? And, and I'm, as I'm on the treadmill running, I'm really not concerned about what Usain Bolt thinks about my running skills, right? I'm just running there for health. I go there for 30 minutes, do my thing, grab some like, you know, <laughs> what can I call it? Even like weights maybe, but I'm not concerned about it, about it being this professional thing that needs to look nice. However, for regular people, um, when we talk about art, they don't see it the same way, right? They are worried, like, this is not good enough. This is not pretty enough. I don't have a talent for it. And so I want us to start seeing the arts the same way, kind of like you can exercise your creativity and it does not need to be professional. You're not being a professional artist. That's for fine artists, people who study, you know, go to grad school and to go do like, you know, bachelor's degrees, stuff like that, where you get professionally in it and you work in it for eight hours a day and it's your job. I'm talking about art that again, you do it as you go to a yoga studio and stretch for a little bit and, you know, and help yourself feel better. This is how I want us to start seeing the arts as something we exercise as part of our health, overall health routines, right? And so how do we do this? There's two ways to make art. There's process-based art making, and then there's product-based art making. Product-based art making is kind of like how most people sadly see the art world, which is I have to think of, I think of a boat and I want to paint this boat, but then when I paint the boat, it doesn't look the way I would love the boat to look like. And then I get frustrated because I don't have a talent. See, this is not for me. And then I discard it. And so I'm not an artist, quote unquote. However, process-based art making is really not having a real plan of how your art will look like in the end. Like when you go into this creative session, you're not thinking about like, oh, this will have to look this way. You go into it with an intention, which we will talk about a little bit later in this uh, training. Uh, we go, that's our, our kind of like our guiding light of what is my intention today? Expressing anger. Oh, okay, cool. So every step I take, the process, I'm focusing on like, is this helping me express this anger? Or is this helping me relax? Like, what is my intention? For this creative session and going back to it because when you engage in that process with that intention you'll start to notice like oh this is helping oh maybe i want to add some paint oh maybe i want to make this you know a little bit stronger or or maybe i want to you know be more soothing and slower in my creation like those are the things that i want you to notice so process-based art making is pretty much focusing on your intention and how your body feels how you're feeling in the moment of creating checking in with yourself constantly which is what makes art become a mindfulness practice. Just being mindful of yourself and where you're at and is this working, is this not working? And, and just to use that as a feedback to continue creating until you feel like you're done and finished. So when we do this as a regular practice, when we start to practice this, it starts to build new neural pathways, right? And this is according to Peter Tse from uh, Dartmouth University. You know, they discovered that, you know, you start to build these new ways of, of, of thinking and being because you start to, again, this is a gym, right? So you're training your brain to think differently, to be more in touch with yourself, to be more in touch with your intuition, with what's happening with you. And therefore you start to notice, you start to become more relaxed, right? So it's kind of like any other practice. If you start to practice meditation, you know, on a daily basis, you certainly start to realize you start to interact differently with your everyday life experiences after the meditation. So we're trying to achieve the same thing here. Um, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with the artistic scar and, um, if you want, you can just write in the chat real quick. Like, do you know artistic scars? Yes or no? 
just a quick thing, you know, if you know it, let me know. And if you don't, you can also let me know as well. So I have already a no, which means I'm going to go deep into it. No, not familiar. No, 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 no. Oh, there you go. I oh, love it. No, I don't artistic scores. Awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Yay. I have someone that knows this. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So artistic score. Let us go deeper into this. So Brené Brown, uh, I hope you're familiar with her. And if not, you should definitely check her out. Very smart woman. Um, she is a doctor in social work and she specializes in vulnerability. Her work is amazing. I agree, Sierra, absolutely. Um, you know, and she had this awesome podcast with Elizabeth Gilbert. Uh, if you don't know Elizabeth Gilbert, she is uh, the one that wrote um, like Eat, Pray, Love book. <laughs> That's what she's famous for. But she's also kind of like a very much advocate for the for creativity and for the arts. Um, and, you know, and they had this awesome discussion about vulnerability, art, etc. And turns out that um, they came up with this term of artistic scar. So it turns out that 85% of the population, right? Um, has experienced something in their life that changed their self-perception. Like they automatically saw themselves differently and thought, I need to change. Like this is not working. Big magic, exactly. That's her other book. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so, you know, so 85% of population experiences something that changes themselves. Like they really, the, the self-perception changes the way you see yourself changes and therefore you start acting differently, right? Of this 85%, half of them were art related. What does this mean? That at some point somebody told you that you were not good enough at the arts and therefore you decided to step down and to be like, no, I'm not good at this. I'm not talented. Therefore, I don't do it because I'm afraid of being embarrassed again. And this artistic scar can look very different for many different people. Um, some people, again, might be like, oh, I had a teacher in school who gave me bad grades in art class. Therefore, I was like, the arts are not for me. Uh, that's like one of the most common ones. Or maybe a parent who was like, oh, you know what? Your brother is more talented in the arts than you are, right? Like those are kind of like the typical ones. I have an example of like myself where I was like, I loved to do visual arts when I was a child. However, my cousins were more talented at it than I was, particularly at uh, realistic art. Um, and that's what it was valued in my family, right? So it was kind of like, oh, they have this talent for art. However, they were like, but Nadia, your talent is in music. So they somehow got me into like music was my thing. And my cousins then couldn't get into music, right? Because that wasn't their talent. <laughs> so somehow we're pushed into different talents um, without really noticing, right? So it's not like it has to be something related to shame. It can be, but it remember, it can also be just like a thing where you were labeled a certain way. And therefore you're like, I shouldn't be doing visual arts. You know, my life of course changed. I know, I mean, I'm now a visual artist and an art therapist, but that had to change through time right? Because I was a musician and that's what I did. Um, however, you know, so we have to think of this when we talk to our clients that sometimes that that could be like the artistic scar could be what's preventing them from connecting to the creativity of our professions, right? Music, dance, art therapy. You know, if, you know, if, if I have some professionals here that are in there, you kind of get that. <laughs> um, However, you know, that's important for us to address because it's kind of like, how do people relate to the arts and, and how do they see themselves in this, in this space and something we can kind of like have a very interesting discussion about so we can start help people heal those scars and actually embrace creativity. Um, another thing is like the inner critic, you know, I feel we're probably all very familiar with um, with the inner critic voice. Uh, let me know if you know your inner critic voice. For some people, it may be very loud and very clear, like, uh, why did you do this? I know I have it all the time. Mine loves to have a microphone on. Oh, it's loud and clear. Yes, yes, I see some yeses there. Yes, right? The, the grinner critic it kind of like loves to take the microphone and it's like, hey, oh God, you're screwing it up again. What will people think? Um, it's definitely speaks and shoots. Absolutely. Um, you know, Artist Way book is a great way to explore the critic. 100%, yes also highly recommend it's very loud that's why we sometimes stop creating because we're afraid like this inner voice I know when I tell people like are you afraid people will not like your art and I've had clients who tell me I don't worry about the others I worry about myself and my own inner critic that cannot help but be very stressed about having perfect art made right because I work with a bunch of uh professional artists and helping them kind of like develop their creativity um so again it can be very loud however the intuitive voice right? That is a very different story. 
intuitive voice can be silent. It's destructive, debilitating. Yes, inner critic, absolutely. However, the intuitive voice, tell me about that. Are you familiar with your intuitive voice? That one can be very subtle. It can be silent, but I don't know, in your case, in my case, it's very assertive. Somehow my intuitive voice is kind of like, do you need to do this? Like there is no questioning and there is no real reason behind it either. I'm just like, I just have to do it. I just know I have to, I, I, I can't explain. I initially feel like that's how it goes. You're like, I can't explain, but let's do this. <laughs> and actually, you know, I was uh, watching this awesome video uh, with an interview to a, a neuroscience um, researcher. And she was saying that actually the intuitive voice what, how they've defined it, it is the knowledge that we have that hasn't been cognitively processed. So it's more physically based. It's kind of like all the knowledge that, that you, your, your physical body acquires that is in there. It is knowledge, but it's just, it hasn't been verbalized. Therefore, there is no kind of like logical explanation to it. So it's more of your body acting and, 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 and giving you wisdom through a different lens. And I thought I love that explanation. I was like, it makes so much more sense. Cause usually when I talk about intuitive voice, people sometimes look at me because I also work in like corporate settings. And when I'm not with creatives, they're like, that's like woo woo. That's like magical thinking. <laughs> like intuitive voice doesn't exist. Right. So I love that there's now an actual like explanation that really goes down, you know, with it. Uh, oh, I, I um, do you recall the neuroscience review you're referring to? No, but in the end, I can definitely look it up and just um, send it to you because I have it written down, uh, or at least the name of the researcher. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like intuitive voice can be assertive. When told since childhood that you're good in art since childhood, your inner critic is the boss. <laughs> yes, oh my God, I hate that. It has become very present in my life. I love to listen to the intuitive voice in whatever I am doing. That is a great way to also exercise it. It's again, mental gym every day start to listen to like, what do I want right now? How am I feeling? How's my body feeling right now? Is this feeling comfortable or not? Is this food that I'm eating like really helping me physically? Like, how am I feeling now that I'm eating this? And you again, every little thing you do can become a very much mindfulness, physical connection practice. So that's great. Um, and then you recall the oh, sorry. Okay, we already read that. All right, thank you. So we have those things, right? We have the intuitive voice, it is there. And so this is why we're going to jump now into our first exercise. Okay. We're going to do something I like to call the emotional color palette. Um, it's very simple. You will just have a blank page, right? This is just, um, right. White piece of paper. You know, I tend to use recycled paper for this kind of exercise if if I have if I don't you know it's again just a piece of paper if you have an our journal already you can just take you know that page as well and I'll tell you we want to divide this paper in four so you're gonna fold it in half fold your paper in half and then fold it in half again mm -hmm. so that when you open it you have four squares right you will have four squares so half and half all right. Once you have those four pieces, if you're working again on a um, on a journal or, or 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 something that you cannot fold, then you can always just you know divide in half and divide in half again. Again, does not need to look pretty. Remember, this is not about aesthetics. This is about process and expression. So what we're gonna do is I want you to grab your colors. You can use markers, pens, uh, you know, colored pencils, watercolors, whatever you have at hand. Um, and I want you to look at your colors and choose a color for you that today represents happiness. Just look at it quickly. What color is happiness for you today? And once you have that color out, I want you to take that color on a happy dance, right? So your first square will be your dance floor and it'll just start dancing around. So let's begin. So, you know, for me, if I'm dancing and I'm happy, I'm probably gonna be like jumping around and just like, you know, going from one side to the other and bringing people over and inviting everyone, probably faster on, on the movement for sure. But not too strong, you know, just soft and, and fuzzy probably. So that's happiness. Second square. I want you to choose a color now that represents sadness for you today. So what color is sadness for you today? And how does 
satinous move, right? So our second square, we're gonna think of how satinous, you know, for some of us might be like slower, kind of like going in no direction in my case. Um, I actually am barely grabbing my color and just letting it kind of like move side to side. And now we're gonna jump to the next one. I'm gonna choose now a color that represents anger for you today. So what color is anger for you today? And once again, third square, how does anger move for you, right? So in my case, anger is kind of like, feels like sometimes I wanna punch something when I'm angry. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I love to punch things. I'm like, just really going at it like, ah, and maybe just scribbling all around very strongly. Probably my, my hand's very tense right now as I draw. Even my face is like angry facing. There you go. And fourth square, I want you to choose a color that represents peacefulness. What color is peace? for you today and how does peace move for you, right? So peacefulness for me is just breathing slowly. So I'm gonna draw my breath. I'm gonna use the rhythm of my breath to draw on the paper. So I breathe in, then I breathe out. And there you have it. So I will now ask everyone, was everyone able to do this exercise? Yes, yes, I see all the yeses, awesome. Well, congratulations, you just became artists. In case you didn't know it, you are now officially an artist. And this is why, well, because you expressed something through color and movement. And that is what artists do, right? Some may do it with more quote unquote talent and skill because again, they practiced and practiced, practiced. Um, but in reality, it's just about using color and movement to express yourself. Uh, it's like, yes, I am an artist. Yes, Michelle, because you are an artist. Yes, we all are an artist. Um, I feel like Oprah right now, like, you're an artist, you're an artist, everybody is an artist. Um, and the thing is, is like, I want you to, now I'm going to be transparent about my process, right? In case you want to use this with, um, you know, clients or, you know, just to think about it. I was very quick, right? I was just like jumping from one to another. Some people complain when I'm in, in, in like workshops like this. However, I'm like, it's intentional. I don't want you to think. I want you to just go and do, right? If I give you time, like you have 10 minutes to choose a color, you're gonna be pondering around your color box for years. You're like, oh, maybe it's green or it's yellow. Well, I don't know, maybe I'm feeling red, right? So if, if I don't give you time, you're just gonna jump into it. That's intuition, right? Like that's going for it, not thinking too much, just going at it. Number two, I was always saying, what's the color for you today, right? Why today? because these colors change. Like this exercise, you're gonna be able to do this every single day and it will look different uh, because it depends on your mood, right? Like if you are going through like a positive, good experience in your life, probably your colors, like your color choice might be very different. Then if you're going through a rough, difficult time, that might affect what you choose and how you choose your colors. So this is why it's very important that we are mindful of that and noticing, right? Like, oh, wow, my palette is very dark. Could that mean anything for me? Like, what is it saying about me right now? Because maybe I haven't noticed I'm going like through a rough patch, right? Or it's kind of like, oh, it's very bright. Or even noticing, at least for myself, noticing I'm using color palettes that are not my usual color palettes. It's mean like, ah, I don't like, for, I don't use, for example, pastels. That's like, those are not my colors. <laughs> like pastel tones, are not, like I love intense colors. So when I started using 
more pastel tones, I started to notice like, what is this telling me about me? So it helped me sit down with myself and reflect what is going on with me. And I noticed I needed to be kinder to myself. I needed to be a little bit toned down with the way I'm being with myself and my inner world that I needed to stop the kind of like race car I was driving and be more gentle. So this is why I'm telling you, colors can mean so much more than just kind of like using it as that, oh, I express something and that's it. Like it really can help you to just start wondering about yourself and where you're at. So again, this is a great exercise. You can use this, you know, sometimes I use it between clients. I would use this all the time to just have like a little breather. I'd be like, this session was very overwhelming. Let me just kind of like grab five minutes of like getting this like feeling out of my system so that I can be functional and great for my next client, right? And then maybe, you know, go back to it. <laughs> but again, having like a small time of container um, or you can also use it for example, for coloring, right? Like if, if like this trend that there was about like coloring books and adult coloring books and everyone loved it, uh, I think it's great. Uh, but however, this can take it to another level of practice because now you're doing it with intention. It's not only coloring, like the coloring itself, it's proven, the movement is very relaxing. It's a contained image. You're not thinking too much yet you're having creative uh, gym <laughs> time. So that helps you because you're actually choosing colors. So that's again, you know, something that for your brain is actually very nice and relaxing. However, when you actually go with intention of like, you know, I'm gonna choose colors that represents how I'm feeling today, like I'm angry okay, let me choose different colors that can show that anger or frustration or whatever it is, and then color that in, right? Then I'm really just, again, as I was saying at the beginning, when you do it with intention, the practice changes, okay? So those are some of the examples that you can use this, you know, to further be, and just noticing even the tension of your hands. Also, I was explaining verbally what I was doing because I used to do this silently with clients, and then I started to notice that people who didn't really have the experience were a little bit overwhelmed. Like they didn't know what I meant by how does sadness move, right? I mean, depends of course on the public, but I noticed that for some people they do need that guidance or at least feel like, oh, I, I get what she's talking about. So that way I'm putting it on myself to be like, this is how it, like, this is how it feels for me so that other people can feel like, oh, okay, this is how it, I should be kind of like doing thinking. Again, they're not copying me because they don't see what I'm creating, but at least they're hearing kind of like how they could be, you know, engaging in this creative process, right? So I just wanted to let you know how the process goes. Um, let's continue. Um, all right. So now let's go into our topic, introducing art journaling, right? So there's this beautiful book, also in my references, Ganem and Fox, it's a little on the older side, um, you know, but again, I think it's, it's, it's actually where I based my work around. I've tweaked it, of course, over the years, but it was my main inspiration. Um, I've done art journaling because I was intuitively doing art journaling as a teenager. I didn't know this had a name and that it was like a practice with like science behind it. I just did it because, you know, I was just a teenager and I wanted to express myself. Actually, I, I always like to tell this funny story that, um, that in, in my art journaling as a teenager, uh, I actually said I would marry uh, a person who designs roller coasters. <laughs> like that was the dream. That was the goal. And of course, um, that didn't happen. <laughs> Sorry, my husband's definitely not a roller coaster designer. Uh, you know, but it's funny that somehow other things, now that I've gone back to my art journal that I noticed like, wow, I already knew back then what I wanted and what I needed without really knowing, right? Like without having that awareness. And this is why art journals are so important. So when I went to art therapy school here in Loyola Marymount University, and we were, we were told that you're going to do an art journal, I was like, wait, that's something I've done my entire life. And this is why I dedicate my life and my research and expertise to like art journaling, because again, it's helped me so much. Uh, so, you know, our journaling, what is it? It's a written diary, but instead of words, you use images, right? Or only words, right? You can also write. I write in my journals. Like I usually do art and then write about it to kind of process what I created and notice things for myself. Uh, but you don't have to write. You can only do visual art and that's fine as well. And why is journaling so important? Well, because again, it keeps a record of our feelings, our experiences, thoughts, emotions, everything that we go through. And then this 
thing we have can help us when we're feeling lost, you may go back in time and see these things you created and then be like, oh, wow, my answers are right here and I didn't even know it. Like I already knew back then what I wanted. I just didn't know how, right? Or noticing like, wow, I somehow really programmed myself to become this thing that I am right now. So noticing as well, kind of how powerful our thoughts are, right? And how what we think and, and what we kind of like program ourselves to think could lead us, you know, in a different direction. Um, also, good thing, why art? Like what is different from regular journaling, which is, you know, writing and it's what most people know about. Well, the difference is that art has symbols, has colors, right? So we already have a different way of expressing ourselves that is not limited to cognitive thinking. And also, we can add our unique vision of things. So when we create art in a journal, we give life to abstract concepts through our own lens, right? Like we can really express how we feel and see life in a way that feels, you know, more rounded and clear. So visual art journals can serve as a great container, you no, know, right? For everything you're experiencing, right? Like there's bad days, there's good days. I have art journals for my mother journey, like becoming a mother and all of that. Then I have my professional art journal. Then I have my personal art journal so that I can have like all the different things that are part of my life and that I can process them separately because that helps me, right? And then I can just kind of like unite it all. Uh, but whatever, it is a great space to hold reflection about life's happenings. So what are the journaling steps? Well, it's very simple. You know, again, these are steps that I'm giving you. Sometimes as a beginner, we don't know where to begin. <laughs> so I feel like having concrete steps helps. However, there is no right or wrong way of creating your art journal. Like you can have your own way of doing your art journal and that's fine, right? So these are just, again, suggestions when you're starting to give yourself kind of like a structure so that then kind of like I give you the rules so that you can then go ahead and break them. Um, so number one, set an intention. You have to have clarity. Why are you creating today? Like, what's your purpose today for creating? Why are you sitting down with this journal? And what do you want to get out of this creative session, right? So have it clear. You can write it. You can put it on a post-it. Or you can just, you know, kind of like go within and really kind of like repeat it to yourself. Number two, we relax. Literally, before starting any creative endeavor, I highly recommend taking some time to relax physically. Why? Because uh, when you relax physically, you allow to kind of like disconnect from the thoughts, the brain, the ideas, and really just connect to your whole self again. And we sometimes need that. Creativity is kind of like more productive in relaxed environments than it is under pressure. However, you know, there's also people who love working under pressure and that's when creativity really flows. That all depends on you. But again, for creative endeavors, it's usually kind of like easier when you are more relaxed and not in a fearful state. So thoughts can disconnect you from your body, right? And that's where our feelings are actually in. Like our, our feelings live inside our bodies, they're, you know, energy, they're moving all around. And we want to connect to that part of, of, our, of our experience. We don't want to be in this like brainy, space. We want to be in a space that is more whole. So after we relax, relaxing, you can do that in many different ways. I usually suggest you can either be doing, you know, kind of like put a guided meditation on, go for a relaxing walk if you have the time. Just put, you know, timer on your clock, three minutes, and just notice your breath for three minutes, a very mindfulness exercise you know, just noticing your breath and whenever you get distracted, going back to your, to noticing your breath, that can be your anchor, you know, just to again, relax. If three minutes sounds like a lot, you can do one minute, that's fine. And then you can increase it. Um, so once you've relaxed and you're, you know, kind of in a good space, then we take kind of like the dive in into the creativity. So you're going to go ahead, close your eyes. If you want to, that's comfortable for you. If not, you can just look downwards. That sends the brain a sen like a, a signal of relaxation. And, you know, you ask yourself if there's any color, movement, material, or an image that can help you represent what you want to express. So going back to anger, right? Kind of like, is there a color that can help me express anger today? Is there a movement I need? Kind of like, I'm very angry and I want to punch something. All right, maybe I just need to kind of like be doing punchy art <laughs> for the day. Um, or maybe I'm thinking of a volcano that's about to erupt, right? So I'm having like a clear visual image of something. 
So we have to listen to that first thought and not question it because that's where our brain, that's where inner critic starts like, hey, wait, you don't know how to draw a volcano. <laughs> this is not going to work. How about we think of something different, right? And things like you wanted a volcano. So many things, there's many ways to get that volcano out there. Um, because the vision really doesn't have to be represented exactly on your journal. This is how we shush the inner critic, like, hey, thank you. I'm not, I know I'm not a great volcano drawer here. I'm not gonna paint, but you know, I'm gonna actually download an image from Google of a volcano and just paste it there. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna start my creation today, right? That can be a way. Or if you have magazines, maybe you know you have like a photo of a volcano somewhere and you're like, I can post that volcano. Um, or again, what's the volcano's colors? Black, red, yellow. Okay, good, maybe those are the colors that I wanna use. So it doesn't have to be exactly what we think because remember this is process-based art making. So um, what matters really is that it, it is kind of like a starter, something like to spark that creativity in you. And then we start creating, right? Like once we have like a little bit of sense of where we want to begin, uh, that's when we can actually kind of like go for it and just start creating, right? You begin using that mental image or your colors or your movements, whatever you're feeling inspired by. And, you know, and then you start to check in like, okay, is this working? What else do I need? Okay, this volcano looks very isolated in this big page. Okay, maybe I wanna add some color in or, or maybe there's a creature coming out. And then, you know, then you just start to notice again, what comes to mind first and allowing yourself. I think that's the most difficult part to allow yourself to be to, to uh, kind of like to give yourself what you want and need because in the moment you might start thinking again like oh but i don't have that color oh i don't have that paint or uh. <laughs> so it's just like thank you inner critic and this is why we go into creative rules right what are the creative rules um again these are for today the workshop but again they can be for the rest of your life if you want to so how your artwork looks really doesn't matter right what matters is you use the materials to heal yourself. That's where it's at, right? We want to make sure that you're using your art materials to feel better. Inner critic will go on vacation, as I was saying. If you notice the inner critic creeping up, telling you that's not good, that's not okay, it will not be, it will not look the shoulds. We can go like, hey, inner critic, nobody will see this. This is just for myself. Thank you for trying to protect me, because again, inner critic is not the bad guy here or the bad girl. Uh, or the bad it, it's just there to protect us from harm. It's trying not to help us not feel ridiculed, feel hurt or feel pain, right? So we have to remind it like, it is in our journal that I'm working on and that is it. <laughs> it's like, it's something I'm working on, no risk there. My family won't stop loving me if I make bad art. <laughs> I won't lose my job because of this. Uh, you know, I, I will be safe. I will still have a home like this, this particular art piece, my life safety does not depend on. Always replenish and nourish. Like this is what art there, like our journaling sessions are for, to give yourself what you need and want. Like notice, even where you're working, if you're working on a desk and you're like, oh, I wish it could be like drawing on the floor, go to the floor, do that, why not? Or, oh, you know what? I wish I could be, again, I'm on the floor and I'm like, oh, you know what? I really need a chair right now. Okay, good, then go for the chair, bring it. Like, it, like the creative experience is not only you with the page, but it's you and your environment where you're at, if you're feeling cold, if you're feeling warm, like those are the things that, that you might wanna start noticing so that you can give yourself that space as well. If you have too many thoughts, you know, always allow yourself to play. Remember, we are playing to be artists here. So when you play, we notice children playing, they play to rehearse. And that's what we want. We're rehearsing, just reminding ourselves, like I'm rehearsing this, this is a game. It's not, it doesn't have consequences. That's what play is all about. Really no consequences, just practicing, practicing, practicing. And you know, when I do these again in person, usually I ask people not to comment on other people's art. And uh, this is because it can interrupt the art process. If I tell you your art is pretty, you will want to protect it. You will no longer want to work more. You will be like, oh, it's already been given a value. And then it becomes harder to stay focused on the process because now I'm trying to protect this thing that, that has been valued by others. And, and this is not the point, right? The point here is to create for yourself and to reconnect 
with your inner world. So that's why we don't comment, good or bad comments. Of course, bad comments, no, don't be responsible for someone else's art scar. <laughs> and we'll be like, wow, that's not really nice or it doesn't look pretty or, or that doesn't look like a tiger to me. Um, like those type of comments can be very harmful, even though they might be coming from a place of helping others. We in this space at least try not to focus on those behaviors. So let us now give ourselves some time to create again. This time around, uh, um, we are going to be um, creating a scribble. You can grab the back of your page if you want to. Again, these are practicing exercises, so I'm not too connected to really having it separately. However, if that's what makes you feel good, go for it. So we're gonna grab your piece of paper now and we're gonna draw a scribble. Um, I'm gonna choose a darker color so that everybody can see what I mean with a scribble. Uh, there we go. So just scribble around your page. If you want to put music while doing this, this is fine. Again, we're just going to scribble around the page. I'm really not giving this too much thought, right? I'm just looking at my computer and seeing what I'm doing. Okay, you have a scribble now. Once you have that scribble, I want you to think of five, well, three, minimum three, then you can go from there. Personal strengths that have gotten you out of trouble in the past. Like what personal strengths do you currently have that you're aware of that help you when times get difficult? Um, and then you're going to write those strengths down again, minimum three, if you want to write 10, even better. And then you're going to assign a color to each strength, right? And then I want you to use that color intuitively with each strength to fill in the different spaces where lines collide, right? How many? That's up to you. We'll talk about it a little bit in the end. So I will give us, um, I will give us five minutes to do this. Again, if you want to continue coloring afterwards, that's fine too. Just five minutes for now. Three minimum strengths and color. Each one a color and then color in, All right? So I'll see you in five minutes. If you want, you can, again, you're muted so you can play some music for yourself. Um, that's okay too, right? And I'm still here if anybody has questions. Nadia, there's just a question about repeating the prompt. Of course. So I want you to think of minimum three strengths that you have. Again, if you find more, that's great. That have helped you in the past to overcome difficulties. Once you have your strengths down, assign a color to each strength and then use those colors to fill in the scribble. Just color in. Second. All right, I see it's all good. All right, see you in five. I see color, not word, no. So every word will, you will assign a color to each word. And then that those colors are the ones you use to color in the different bubbles in the scribble.
All right, so our five minutes are up. You know, sometimes for some people, this is so little time. And then for other people, this is like an eternity, depending on who you're talking to. It's like, really, can we be done already? So that can happen, right? Again, depending on art scars, depending on like creative stories behind, um, or even our own, you know, current state, where are we? Right, like there's days I know where I'm doing art and I'm like, Ugh, can this be over already? And then there's days where I could be going on for three hours straight and happy as a clam. So, um, so again, um, you know, again, this is how my art looks like right now. <laughs> again, not finished. You can continue creating. You can continue doing this. Um, as I finish up speaking, I do think that coloring is a great way to concentrate at least I don't know about you, I would do this all the time in school that I would be scribbling away while listening in class and that would help me concentrate. And it's usually because uh, your body and, and your anxiety can be focused on like the energy can be focused on something and therefore there's space for your brain to actually be paying attention. So this is why I always encourage this. I know in our um, Adam meetings, we are always coloring and our executive director, she was like, it's funny that this is a cultural thing that you're all like painting and creating while talking business. And we're like, yeah, well, that's how we work. That's how we work best. Um, so after we create art, I always like to give my clients a space for self-exploration, right? In this case, I would recommend you just, again, shoot, like look at your creation, you can always look at from afar that can help give you different perspective or take a picture of it and then look at the picture that can give you different perspective of your art. But just notice kind of like what colors stand out more and from those colors, what, what do they mean? What did they stand for? Like, for example, I notice even though I have darker colors, my creativity color here, actually, let me go back real quick. Um, you know, I noticed that it, it really jumps out a lot. So maybe for me, my personal strength that helps me get out of, you know, raise from the ashes is usually creativity, right? That's something that could mean to me. So you can look at yourself and notice like what colors stand out? Why? How are they connected? Like I notice most of mine are all kind of like somehow connected that I need the three, which in my case was creativity, intelligence, and connections, um, you know, connecting to other people um, that have gotten me out. Right. So whenever I'm feeling low, whenever I'm feeling down, I can always kind of like look at these exercises and remind myself, this is how I've gotten out. Like I've done it in the past. Sometimes when you're in it, you forget. <laughs> and this is why I love to work around, you know, strengths, uh, you know, the strengths based approach to be like, remember, you can, you have, and you will be doing it again. Um, so now let's go back to our presentation. Some other things to consider uh, when you're making this type of art. You can notice what materials you used. Again, right now, colors, pencils, why is that? Maybe they were just available to you and that's okay. I've, I've done this with like literally office, uh, you know, <laughs> like office materials, you know, like highlighters and like pencil and a red pen. <laughs> so yes, you can do it with almost anything. Um, and did you represent an exact image or did it shift while you were creating? Like, did you think and expect something? And then when you were creating, you noticed that that wasn't happening for you. Um, did you flow with the process? Like, were you just really in it and just being very present or were you having a difficult time coming back to the exercise? Were you giving yourself permission to do what you wanted, right? Like, were you kind of like thinking like, I should change colors. You know what? I chose pink for creativity, but maybe I should have chosen purple. I want to change it. And then thinking like, I shouldn't change it. I already did this label and it should stick, right? So thank you think about those things, kind of like, hmm, interesting. Did you feel obligated to create something pretty, right? Like that is something that I always experience where I'm not doing something pretty looking and I'm like, oh the God, this looks so fast made and, and not well done. And, and then reminding myself like, that's not the point. So when you answer those questions, you can go back and answer these other questions. Like go take it to a next level and be like, why these materials? Why did I choose, for example, materials that are more controlled, like markers, pencils, or if I choose watercolors, oh, why did I go for a more loose media? Like, what is that telling me about myself? Where am I? You can also ask yourself, was I able to express myself fully? Or was I like, kind of like restraining myself? 
during the process. Um, how comfortable are you feeling with change right now in your life, right? Like if the image changed and you were uncomfortable, well, how are you feeling right now about change in your life? Um, do you give yourself what you need or do you start limiting yourself and start giving yourself like, nope, you shouldn't be doing this, you should change that, this shouldn't be this way. Uh, or do you hang on to shoulds, right? And what other people think and, and other people's expectations of yourself, right? Like that is also a big question. And again, all these questions, they're not there for yourself to judge you or to give your inner critic a higher volume mic. These are about self-awareness, just noticing where you are in the moment so you can adjust your life to where you're at instead of just trying to push yourself to be at a certain level, all right? So this would be it for today for myself. These are my references and citations. Um, I will now go ahead and take some questions uh, or experiences. Okay, let me see. Uh, I wasn't able to find a correct right shade from my markers and Sharpie, so I tried different colors. Absolutely, right? Sometimes we can just go ahead and adapt. Um, I want to go back. I know I had like some questions. If you still have questions, now's the time. Please open the mic, or if you just want to share kind of like your experience and how you were doing, I will also appreciate it. We have other trainings coming up for the Hope Series. I hope you join them. It's usually great pre centers. I love being at these things. Um, right now, I, I've gotten the, the, the question about getting a copy of this presentation. Currently, I cannot because I'm presenting it somewhere else where they request it. I particularly don't do it until I do that presentation for them. So currently, I am not able to share it. Um, the references, yes, I can definitely send those uh, for you. Uh, I usually actually do share my presentations, I will be honest. Uh, sadly, right now, I'm kind of bound to that contract, right, where they are expect, like, expecting some kind of like confidentiality there. Um, so I cannot really share it right now. Um, but again, you know, I can definitely share references for sure. I can just do a, a document and send it away. Uh, I might be able to share it at a later time. Yes, <laughs> after after this thing is done in November, I will be released from that uh, from that contract. So absolutely. Um, and references, uh, thank you. Hey, thank everyone here for being here. Uh, this incredible grounding and time passed very quickly. I'm glad, super informative, well organized. Oh, thank you for that. Um, different ground ex grounding exercises. I do have a few. Um, I'm trying to think of, of some of them right now. Let me just see what I come up with them. And there's a second page of references. Oh no, let me put the references again in if you wanna take pictures. Uh, you can totally do that. Um, let me just go back. And Nadia, I am happy to send the references out um, in the follow-up email that everyone will be getting um, after the session. Um, it also includes the survey that I did post in the chat. Um, and just that feedback really helps us ensure that we're continuing to best serve all of you with this uh, HOPE series. We really appreciate you spending part of your day with us. And of course, we really appreciate Nadia's time uh, for sharing with us today as well. Um, I did put a couple other links in the chat. Um, we are recruiting for HOPE uh, presenters for 2023. So if you know anyone or you uh, would be interested in joining that community, um, you can submit a se session proposal to us. Um, Nadia, I'll also include uh, the podcast link and then any other um, links uh, that we may want to put in that resource email. Awesome. Thank you. I see there's a question. Sierra, you have a question about sharing. Absolutely. Um, my question is, when you're doing the workshop, um, I noticed that you don't ask the participants to share what they're doing. And I'm just curious as what, what your thought process is, or is that because of the container that we're in? It's the container that we're in. Usually if I have kind of like, this is more of kind of like a, I see more of like kind of like I said training. And again, it's a kind of like exercises that are more personal. Um, so usually I don't do sharing when it's kind of like a shorter period of time. Um, so, but usually I actually do, <laughs> you know, we do have time for that. I will also tell you depends on the public. I mean, for example, when I do my corporate trainings, People don't want to share. They're like, I'm with my coworkers. <laughs> it's like, I am not sharing personal stuff here. 
So it's kind of like I allow them to be like, if anyone wants to share or questions. So I open it up kind of like if someone wants to share something, absolutely feel free to share. Um, but, you know, again, depending on the public, um, I will definitely allow for more like, let's talk about what we created. Also, these exercises right now, we're kind of more concrete. Um, so it's kind of like very different if it were something that I'm like, okay, let's share more about kind of like what the process was for you, et cetera. So I hope that kind of like clarifies. It does. It does. Um, and it, and it kind but if you want to share something right now, please feel free. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't mind sharing, um, but <laughs> I, I was thinking because I attended another Hope series and in that one, she didn't ask people to share either. And oh. I do some art workshops and I have asked people to share, but I was like thinking like, I'm like, I'm wondering, um, and I'm not trained. This is just me as an artist just wanted to share. And so mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm wondering like what advice or what wisdom can I gain from seeing like, oh, they're not asking people to share. Like, so being um, very, I guess like keyed in to say, oh, okay, pay attention to the environment, especially because like you said, some people didn't want to share in the environments. And I was like, well, I asked for feedback, but at the same time, people were sharing once it was over, but during the presentation, they didn't want to share. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And it can, as the facilitator, sometimes I know it's not a, you know, like a ding at me, but I'm just like, okay, how do you pull that out of people? Or do you just let it be what it is? And you want to share, you want to share. If you don't, you don't. And then that, like, um, I guess that space of no talking or nobody sharing it's like okay well thank y'all for doing the activity we're gonna move on to the next thing so and and I think for me it was like wanting to see that that they did the activity and how it was processing for them in in real time versus after because it's like I had set activities but going to the next activity is kind of like oh well if y'all didn't want to do that one this one I was going to actually close your eyes so I don't know just trying to gauge the environment in process um but just like listening to you and just watching I'm like mm, there's a there's an intention behind it um and so I just want to say thanks for you facilitating this and then also just answering that question because it helps me to see like when you have that intention out of everything that you said I love the activities I'm like if you don't have that intention you're kind of just presenting and sharing but if you have that intention then if they share if they don't share it can align with the intention that you said at the beginning if I may give you kind of like an advice, like sometimes I sometimes do this. I'm like, just write in one word what your experience was doing art today in the chat. Mm -hmm. okay. And that way, if you want, if everyone wants to do it right now, please feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Kind of like one word that summarizes kind of like what your experience was today creating. That mm -hmm. way you give people kind of like a safe space to not feel like they need to write this like novel, mm -hmm. <laughs> what they experience. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, depending on the public, uh, you know, um, and so, but it is again, a way to be like, let's be more interactive. Like, like let's yeah. have yeah. space for like some processing in the end. Yeah. Okay. I am a firm believer that sometimes the process itself is what's healing, right? Like just mm -hmm. creating, we don't need to really go into the, into kind of like the verbal or the, or the cognitive space, mm -hmm. just allowing for the experience to be what it is, mm. really be present, right? And that's something you can also say at the end, kind of like, if you want to share something, that's fine. If not, if the process, mm -hmm feels enough then that's enough too right okay. that's something okay. we can do I know, thank you so much for hey so my pleasure another grounding uh, someone asked for a grounding uh, exercise something i love doing i love doing um kind of like a a phys like a, a a body scan like meditation body scan and then just assigning color to each part of my body something like my feet what color are they today what color are my legs today what color are my hips you know my womb stomach and I just think about it and I even sometimes allow myself to be like well what form do they have today do they feel tangled do they feel tense right and then I just assign like a kind of like you know like a tense line or maybe just like a scribble and then I paint that vision that I had of my body in a quick way um actually let me see if I have it somewhere around here I do not have it I don't have my no I don't have oh yeah here it is so for example this is how it looks like in the end uh, like for example, one day it was this kind of like, I'm feeling like very stiff figure. And then other days are like, oh, it feels like flowy. And, and the, you know, and just like, I feel like I'm expanding and I'm all over the place. So that is another way to just kind of like go back, ground yourself in your body and then kind of like find a way to, to represent it 
like physically, you know, so you can view it and then think about that. Kind of like, how does this view? Like, how is like right now? I know my last drawing was of me with one foot in the air and the other just like really grounded. And I was like, interesting that I'm feeling that way, right? Just like one foot kind of like floating and the other one is really grounded. <laughs> so again, it just goes back to me noticing like, well, yeah, I do feel like I'm in this in-between of like, where, where, where am I going and where's this going in life, et cetera. And so it helps me again, just to be mindful of noticing, like I have been anxious lately, maybe it's because of this, right? And then going back to it. So that is another thing. Um, let me, oh, I also promised the neuro, um, neurologist that has been studying that her name, I will write it in the chat. Uh, it's, it's Kia Nobre. And she's a neuroscientist uh, from Oxford. She's the one that's talking about like intuition and it, it, like looking at it from, from more of like a science uh, perspective. Nadia, we had a couple of questions in the chat. Um, oh. One uh, was just to repeat what you said about noticing where we are in this moment to shift and not push self to other space. Oh. If I can have that person clarify what that question was about, <laughs> I don't know who wrote it. Do we have? Right. I, I was just, I was, um, I, I, I thought that's what you said at the end. And I wondered if you could just repeat, say, I'm not sure if that's, if I got that right. I thought you had said about at the end, I thought you said to notice, um, where, what, you know, noticing your, your things and notice where you are in the moment rather than shifting. I'm not sure. So, oh no, sorry. So that you can shift as needed. I thought that's what you said, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So noticing, for example, if you're, if you're in a creative state and you're creating, right. And sometimes we get so caught on that. We don't even notice like, oh my God, my back hurts. I've been sitting here just, you know, creating art in a different way. So sometimes noticing, like taking just a second to be like, okay, how am I feeling physically while I'm creating to make sure a you're comfortable. So you can be like, okay, maybe I need to, you know, change my posture maybe that is it um you know or sometimes maybe you noticing like I'm even bored <laughs> it's like you're I'm, I'm painting this volcano <laughs> going back to our example and it's not going anywhere <laughs> it's like it's like I'm not really feeling this volcano so you can always check in with yourself and notice like okay what is missing from this volcano like what would this volcano make it feel more like what I need or my intention right oh I'm wanting to express anger is my volcano maybe very little and oh would it look nicer if it was bigger or maybe I need it to be exploding okay so let me draw an explosion right and just see how that feels just drawing the, the explosion of that volcano and allowing yourself to be a little bit more physical and really connecting to to the anger which can be you know at some point or for some uh very threatening so so kind of like allowing there to be like here it's fine I can explode here the volcano can explode in this journal and I won't harm anybody, right? So allowing yourself for that. So it's kind of like this continuous checking in with yourself while you're creating and giving yourself what you want and need in that moment. Does that clarify? Yeah, thanks, yes, thank you. Okay, cool. And then Nadia, there's another question. Maria, if you would like to unmute yourself, you uh, can ask Nadia. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Going on the web. <laughs> yes. So my question was, I'm not a therapist, I'm an art teacher, and I work with kids with special needs, mm -hmm. and a lot of them high-functioning kids with there's this spectrum, or, and they're very anxious. I, and I also work with gifted kids. So this is very anxious crowd, and I feel they will really benefit from this healing and this self exercise is why I signed up for this session founded. Yes. I want to do always wanted to do a little bit more therapy with them. Um, so how can I break the sickness? They uh, they really getting 
uh, in a very anxious state even during regular art lessons. And they, um, to the point when they start steaming, when they say, oh, they excited, you know, they're getting very excited, but it sometimes come to very unexpected behavior. And like I was trying to figure out what can I do in this and how I can help them. Well, you were making me think of a, a couple of, of, of ways to use kind of like, you know, the, the body and the physicality to express, you know, some of that anxiety and to actually allow to release it mm -hmm. so that then we can ground them, that we can help them kind of like combine the whole, like express the anxiety, but then how to hold it back again. So you were making me think of like, if they're, you know, being kind of like very loud and remote, just be like, how about we jump a little bit and just mm -hmm. kind of like allow them to like, let's jump. And like, how does your body feel like moving right now? Do you want to shake your hands? Let's all, all shake our hands in our body, you know, because usually anxiety is, is a feeling of needing to like escape, run, right? So what we want to do with the anxiety is when, yes, allow that body to feel like, let's shake it off and let's just like dance and jump and that, you know, just connecting emotionally with the kids to be like, I'm going to jump with you and let's just all do this. And while you're jumping, think of a color, right? Think of a color that right now you're thinking of. And then, and then after we've jumped now, take that color on the page and let's color it in. And at first you can have them be like, you know, kind of like moving faster and then start to slow that process. Like, okay, now let's do it slower. Let's slow down that. And let's now start breathing. Let's breathe very deeply. We're going to take that breath and breathe in with that color and just like, and breathing out. And then you can start showing them like these are again, small relaxation techniques, breathing, breathing slowly lowers anxiety. So we want to bring them to that space of slowing down. But if you have a color there that can help them because sometimes just the, the, the breathing can be very boring for kids, particularly. <laughs> but if you're like, let's breathe and breathe with me, let's paint that breath, right? And that everyone can represent that however they want and just follow that rhythm, right? Just be like, let's, and then you can help them. Now let's do it slower, even just very slowly drawing so that you can bring back that energy to a lower level. And then you're somehow showing them how they can be with the feeling, which is, you know, stay present with some of that anxiety, because if we repress it, it will show up somewhere else, right? Like it'll um, shift somewhere else. Um, but then at the same time, being able to sit down with the whole, how do I relax? Like, how can I actively take something and relaxing? But yes, you were going to ask something. Um, they very literal. So sometimes this breathe with this color, it's absolutely unclear for them, you know? Okay. Like, it's like, they don't understand how you can breathe this color. What is that? Like, they're very, very literal, so. No, like I'm literally telling you, like we're gonna use the breath as a rhythm. So if mm -hmm. you're breathing slow, like breathe in slowly and notice how my hand is mm -hmm. moving slowly. Kind of like explaining your mm -hmm. process. Like I said, if you were telling them, like, look what I am doing, like that's how you make it mm -hmm. more concrete. The color you can, give them choice. If you want, if you're like, kind of like red, if you feel very anxious or I don't know, blue, if you're feeling a little bit anxious, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just to give them kind of like a sense where they can self identify a little bit, right? Just that mm -hmm. you can give them options. If feeling like, if you feel like it's overwhelming, right? And I mm -hmm. love that you had that instinct of like, ah, if I give them this big thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that is a good thing that you have that instinct. That's a good strength to have. <laughs> what you mm -hmm. Does Thank that you help? So yes, definitely. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Lighting. Anyone else? Hope all is good. <laughs> Thanks, Nadia, so much. I hope everybody has uh, a restful and wonderful weekend.